tonight, Lord, we call upon the name of the Lord. We ask you, God, that you would come and speak to our hearts, God. Prepare us, Lord. Lead us, God. Guide us, Lord, tonight as we pray that we should pray in the will of God. That we should pray as we ought to pray, Lord God. Lord, as your disciples asked in your word tonight, God, we ask that you would teach us to pray, God. Powerful things happen when we pray, Lord. And so, Father, tonight we acknowledge that your Holy Spirit is our teacher, is our guide. Give us your vision, your wisdom, your direction, your understanding, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Just have a seat real quick. You want to keep playing, Elijah? Go for it, man. You guys can sit down right on the stage there if you want to. I just have a couple quick thoughts on prayer. If you have your Bibles, turn to me the book of James, chapter number five. James, chapter number five is kind of like my go-to place when thinking about prayer. For sure, there's other spots that we could go. Jesus had a lot to say about prayer. But I see an example in the word in James chapter five. We're gonna take a look at verse number 13 through verse number 18. Look at how it starts out. It says, any among you suffering, let him pray. Anybody suffering in the room tonight? I mean, right there, and that seems so simple. Let him pray. He continues on, he says, is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Again, so simple, yet so powerful from the word of God. If you're suffering, pray. If you're happy, sing. Hopefully tonight, you can have the joy of the Lord and sing, even in the midst of your suffering, while you're praying. That, that's kind of a lot, isn't it? Hopefully it's not too much. Verse 14, is any among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Verse 16, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another. That's why I had you guys laying hands on each other tonight. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Wow. Now look at the end of the verse. It says, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. And then, as if that wasn't enough, he goes on to give us a natural example, a picture from the Word of God that helps us to understand how effective our prayers can be. It says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Okay, so we're not talking about Jesus. Sometimes we can write Jesus off, right? Well, that was God in the flesh. Of course his prayers got answered. I mean, this is, this is God we're talking about. Of course people got healed when he prayed. And we almost, you know, don't recognize and realize we've got the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of us. We have God in us. And there's really no excuse to write Jesus off because Jesus came to live a life and show us what life should be like. And yet we still do it because that's Jesus. So James, rather than point to Jesus, points to a man who was flawed. Points to a man who you can see had insecurities. Points to a man who maybe made some wrong decisions. If you look at some of his motivations, ran with fear after one of the greatest victories he had. So we see this guy who's just like us. Frail, fearful, insecure. And he says, was not Elijah a man with a nature like ours? And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. Now, we don't get a picture of this prayer. All we see is in 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, it just says Elijah showed up and said something. But apparently Elijah prayed, and look at what happened. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. How many of you would like to pray and have results like that. I know I would. My goodness. It doesn't rain for three years and six months. Give me a break. That's crazy. But that's not the end of the story. Look at what else it says. Verse 18, and he prayed again. So simple, isn't it? He prayed, it didn't rain. He prayed again. What happens when he prayed again? And the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Now, once again, how many of you want prayers like that? 
I do. I want to have powerful prayers. I want to have effective prayers. I want to have availing prayers. So how did Elijah pray? 1 Kings chapter 18, let's take a look at his prayer. We don't get to see the first one. We only get to see the second one. 2 Kings chapter 18. I said 18, but it's actually chapter 8. No, 1 Kings 18. I said 2 Kings. Sorry, 1 Kings 18. I'm tripping. I'm sorry. 1 Kings 18. We'll get there sometime tonight. Right at the end of 1 Kings 18. So if you find 1 Kings 19, back up to verse number 41. We get to see Elijah's prayer. This fervent prayer that availed much. This effective prayer. 1 Kings 18, verse 41, Then Elijah said to Ahab, who was the king at the time, Go up and eat and drink, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. Now, up to this point, it had been three years, and yet no rain on the land. Elijah says, Go up and eat. Hurry up. Eat, because I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Now, as of yet, not a drop had fallen, but he heard the sound. Verse 42, So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And seven times he said, go again, go again, go again, go again, go again. What's happening? He's praying. Verse 44, and it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Verse 45, now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. And then you, if you read the next verse, Elijah girded up his his loins, right? He, he girded himself. That means he wrapped himself up in his garment and he ran ahead of the chariot. The hand of God came upon him that he actually outran a chariot. That's quite an amazing, miraculous feat. What do we see about the prayer that Elijah prayed? First thing that we see is this. It was a focused prayer. He had something that he was bringing to God that he was focused on. There was one thing on his mind. And what did he say? He said, I hear the sound of of the abundance of rain. There was one thing that he could contemplate, and that was the will of God at that moment. It was time for the rain to come. And by faith, he heard the sound. So much so that he was focused on it, he said, go and eat because something's about ready to take place. And it was a focused prayer. I don't believe Elijah was up there praying for healing at that moment. I don't believe that Elijah was up there praying for prosperity at that moment. You know what I think Elijah was praying for? rain, right? That was the will of God at that time. He heard the sound of the abundance of rain. And so when he bowed down before the Lord to pray, he was praying for rain. It seems so simple, doesn't it? Pastor, why you got to teach me this? Because sometimes we get into prayer and we're not focused. We get every distraction, everything to take our minds off of what's important. What is it? If you were told that you had a meeting with the president and you had five minutes to talk to the president, in those five minutes, you were to greet him You were to give him a compliment and you were to ask him for one thing. You would probably spend hours, if not days, dwelling on, how am I going to greet him? What am I going to say? What what would I wear? How should I be dressed? Am I going to put on a tie or am I going to wear the high heels? You know, what am I going to do? Am I going to go get my hair done? A compliment. I got to give him a compliment. Maybe I'll tell him he has a nice suit. Maybe I'll tell him I like his hair. Whoa, wait a second. You know, he's been in the White House for eight years, his hair's gone gray, maybe I want to stay off the hair, right? And, and all of a sudden, you, you'd be focused, but, but then you'd come to that last thing, well, what am I going to ask him? I've only got five minutes, I, I can't really ask for a lot. I, I've got a chance. Now, the great thing about God is God is always there. He's right there. In fact, the Bible says you're seated with Christ in heavenly place. So anytime you want to talk to God, all you got to do is just turn and say, hey, Jesus, and he's right there with you, right? And yet... We still have to have a posture and a focus. 
when we go into the presence of God and when we talk to God, there are times where you can just sit in the presence of God, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. There are times to just be quiet in the presence of God. We need to do that. We need to receive from God. But when it comes to a petition, a prayer, we need to focus. We need to know what it is that we're asking God for and bring that to God. God, reign. One thing I want to ask you, I don't need five minutes. God, you're awesome. I love you. I'm so grateful. Here in your presence, reign. It's the one thing I need, God. He had a focused prayer. He heard the sound before he ever prayed. We will pray in the will of God, but we need to hear his will first by faith. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him. Now if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. See, when you know it's the will of God, you can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. When you know that you've got God's word, you know you've got God's will. And you can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. When you know that God wants something for you, when you know that it's in accordance, in line with his word. You know it's in line with his character. You know that it's going to be good for God, good for others, good for me, in that order. Then all of a sudden you can say, God, I I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. God, I know this is what you want for my life. I can see it here in your word. God, I can see it in your character. God, I know that it's going to be a blessing to you. God, I know that it's going to be a blessing to others. And God, I know this will be something that's good for my life, that it won't be harmful to me. So God, I ask, you can have the petitions you've asked of him because you know it's according to his will. You hear the sound of the abundance of rain. You're focused and you bring that prayer to God. What else do we see in Elijah's prayer? Second thing is this, is that it was a fervent prayer. It was a fervent prayer, not only focused, not only directed, not only faith-filled based on the word of God, but second, it was fervent. In other words, Elijah meant business. Look at what the posture of his prayer was. It says that he got down on his knees and he put his head between his knees. This was the posture of prayer. And he never looked up to see results. He sent his servant and said, I want you to go up and take a look, see if there's any rain. And he sat there in that state, praying. And every time he prayed and did not get results, he never came up. He never stopped. He never said, well, I guess this isn't the will of God. I guess this isn't what I should be doing for my life. I I guess I'm a false prophet. I should have died with the prophets of Baal over there. No, what did he do? He kept his head down. He was focused and he was fervent. And he said, go up and check. No rain yet? God, I pray for rain. Go up and check. No rain yet? God, I need rain. Go up and check. He was fervent. See, what if he would have stopped on the sixth time? or the fifth time, or the fourth time, or the third time. See, I believe we give up too easily on our own prayers and we miss out on the will of God because we don't really want to put in the time and the effort waiting on God. God is saying, don't give up. At the first sign of failure, don't give up. You're gonna be met with adversity when it comes to the will of God. The devil doesn't want you to have it. Your flesh doesn't want you to have it. There's going to be world systems that are coming against you, things that have been designed to hold you back. And yet you can have it if you really want it, if you're willing to be fervent and stay in there. What else do we see in Elijah's prayer? Not only was it focused, not only was it fervent, but finally it was a faith-filled prayer. Look at verse number 43 and 44 once again. Verse number 43 says, He said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And seven times he said, go again. Verse 44, then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. Not a lot of results, if we're honest, right? Think about it this way. His servant went and looked and he went like this and he saw a cloud coming up out of the sea about the size of a man's hand. I looked at that and said, That little puff, that little weak thing out, that's what you're praying for, Elijah? It doesn't look like much. You think that you're going to end this drought with that right there? I I don't know. I I don't think that's all that great of results. This is the mighty man of God that I'm following. 
And yet look at what Elijah tells his servant. He says, after he hears that there's a little cloud rising out of the sea, he says, so he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. In other words, he had faith that once he saw the start, once he saw the result, that there was gonna be so much rain that it would halt Ahab from traveling. Now you can read that that one little cloud the size of a man's hand darkened the entire sky and there was not just rain, there was heavy rain on the earth. Elijah prayed, it didn't rain on the land for three years, six months. He prayed again and it rained and the earth produced its crops. Tonight, church, we're gonna pray. There's an action of faith that our works back up what we said. Our works back up our prayers. So some things tonight, like we talked about with deliverance, you're gonna have to work together with God to keep the results. But tonight, let's start with a focus. Let's hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Let's stay fervent, let's stay passionate. Let's get our hearts in there tonight. Don't go brain dead tonight. And then finally, let's be faith-filled. Let's put our actions behind our words. Let's believe God so much that we start preparing, that we start going ahead because there is going to be an abundance of answered prayers that come into our lives. Can you believe God with me for that tonight? Amen. Amen.